Welcome to this training course about the IF function in Excel. Just what is the IF function? Well, it's a preset formula you can use in Excel to deal with situations where you want to see a result based on whether a condition is true or false. Once Excel determines the outcome of the true or false condition, there's a fork in the road. Excel takes one path if the condition is true or a different path if the condition is false. For example, I'm tracking expenses in this spreadsheet. Anything that is less than or equal to 100 is within budget and anything over 100 is over budget. So 100 within budget, 150 over budget. I'm going to delete the formula to show you how I created it and explain it more fully. So I'll click here where I want my formula to be, then I'll click on the Insert Function button. Since I recently used IF in this list of functions, it's at the top of the list, I'll just click OK, and that opens the Function Arguments dialog box. And as I type in these boxes, Excel will enter the formula in this spreadsheet here. The first thing is the logical test. It can only return either true or false. For example, is A2 less than or equal to 100? That's my test. Note, by the way, that for the IF function to work, you need to use a comparison operator in the logical test. Less than, greater than, equals, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or not equal to. Now, here's my value if true argument. If the uh, number is less than or equal to 100, what do I want to see happen? Well, in this case, I want to say within budget. So I'll type that. And notice that I've typed quotation marks around the text within budget and that's required that if you want text to display in the spreadsheet you need to use quotation marks and notice we've got if true within budget now my value if false argument what do I want it to say well I want it to say over budget and I'll click OK we can see that we're within budget here because a2 is less than or equal to 100. Now I'm going to copy the formula down and to do that I move my insertion point to the lower right corner of the cell until it turns into a black cross and then I'm just going to double click and that copies the formula. So 98 is less than 100 so it's within budget. 150 is more than 100 so it's over budget. In this example, I'm comparing predicted expenses to actual expenses. Here, for example, I predicted 900 but spent 1500, so I'm over budget. Here, I predicted 900 but only spent 500, so I'm okay. So I'll delete the formula to show you how I created it. And this time, I'm going to type it directly in the spreadsheet instead of using the insert function dialog box. So I'll type my equal sign and then if and my opening parentheses. Well, my logical test is, and by the way, if you're not certain what to enter, there's a tooltip down here and it says logical test is my first thing to enter. So it is A2 less than B2. Then I'll type a comma and then what do I want to have happen if my test is true? Well, I want it to say over budget. So I'll type in my quotation marks because this is text over budget and a comma to separate value if true from value if false. And if false, I want to say OK. So I'll type OK in my ending parentheses and press Enter. And there we've got over budget. And then I'm going to copy the formula by moving my insertion point till it turns to this black plus sign and double click. And there we are. I'm over budget, but here I'm okay.
Here's another example. I'm going to use the IF function to see what the cost of merchandise plus shipping expenses will be. If the amount sold is less than 100, the shipping expense is $10. If the amount sold is 100 or more, the shipping expense is only $5. So I'll start my formula with my equal sign. And I'm going to type this formula a little bit differently. I'm going to add the contents of cell B2 to the IF statement. And you'll see why in just a bit. Type my opening parentheses, and my logical test is, is B2 less than 100? And type a comma to separate the logical test from the value of true argument. If B2 is less than 100, then the shipping expense is $10. Now notice that I don't type quotation marks around $10. You only use quotation marks around text. I'll type my comma to separate the value of true argument from the value of false argument, which is $5. And I'll type my closing parentheses and then press Enter. And 124 is certainly over 100, and so the expense is 5, and that's 129, so that's correct. Now I'll copy the formula by double clicking in the corner. and 98 is under 100, so the expense is 10, and 98 plus 10 is 108. Now the reason I typed B2 in front of the formula is that it just makes the formula a little bit easier or quicker to type it that way instead of typing within the formula B2 plus 10 and B2 plus 5. In this example, I have two different deduction rates depending on salary level. For those earning less than 25000 the deduction rate is 5%, and for those earning greater than or equal to 25000 the deduction rate is 6%. So I'll start my formula typing my equal sign, and I'm going to do some math up front. Type B6 times the result of the IF function do my parentheses, my opening parentheses, then my logical test is, is B6 less than 25,000. And comma to separate my logical test from my value of true argument. And if true, then the deduction rate is 5% or cell B2. Now I need this to be an absolute cell reference so that when the formula is copied down the column, B2 won't change to B3 and so on. So I'll press the F4 key on my keyboard, and the dollar sign signify this is an absolute reference. I'll type a comma to separate the value of true argument from the value of false argument, which is 6% or cell B3. And again, I'll press my F4 key on my keyboard to make this into an absolute reference and I'll type my closing parentheses and press enter and there's my deduction 215874 now I'll move my cursor till it becomes a black plus sign in the lower right corner here of the cell and then double click to copy the formula now I'll do a small test just to verify that the formula worked correctly so this salary of 35979 is greater than 25000 so it should be 6% so I'll type equals 0.06 times cell B6 and press enter and we get the same result 215874 and this salary being less than 25,000 should be 5% so I'll type the formula equals 0 0.05 times cell B7 and press enter we get 124995 as before, so the formula is working perfectly. Now again, I type the formula as B6 times the if statement because that just makes the formula a little shorter than typing B2 times B6 and B3 times B6 within the if statement.
You can use more than one function in a formula. That's called nesting. You place one function inside another. Nested if functions increase the number of possible outcomes. For example, so far you've seen two outcomes for true and false. Something is within budget or over budget, or a tax deduction is either 5% or 6%. But in this example, I want to show three outcomes, loss, break-even, and net income. And to do that, I need to use two if functions in one formula. So I'll type my equal sign and if, my opening parentheses, and in this example the logical test in the first if function is this, is b1 less than b2. Type a comma to separate the logical test from the value if true, and if true then loss. I'll type a comma and then I'm going to type my second if statement. Note that when I'm typing the second if statement, I'm actually substituting the if function for the value if false argument in the first if function. The logical test in the second if function is this. Does b1, oh I forgot my parentheses, my opening parentheses, b1 equal b2, comma, if true, break even. Comma, if false, net income. And I'll type a closing parenthesis and notice that it's in green, and that lets me know that I helps me know that I've got a nested function. And I'll type another parenthesis and that's black, and that lets me know that I've completed the formula. And I'll press enter, and I've got a net income here because we've got revenue of eight hundred and an expense of 700. Well, I'll type 500 for revenue. And that gives us a loss. And I'll type 700 for revenue. And that gives us break even. What's happening is, if the first logical test evaluates to false, then the second if statement is evaluated. In this example, I need to figure out commissions on sales amounts, and there are three different commission rates. For sales amounts of less than 500, the commission is 2%. For sales amounts greater than 10,000, the commission is 5%. Otherwise, the commission is 3%. And I'll start my formula out by typing equal, and I'm going to multiply B2 by the result of the if statement. So B2 times and then if in my opening parentheses and my first logical test is B2 less than 500 comma if so if true then 2% comma then my second if statement and then my logical test is if B2 is greater than 10,000 comma, value of true is 5%, otherwise 3%. I'll type my closing parentheses, and I managed to type both of them at the same time. Press enter, and then I'll double click to copy this down. And I can tell that, at a, that this is a 5% commission. It's over 10,000, and here we've got a 2% commission because it's less than 500, but here we've got greater than 500 but less than 10,000, and so we've got a 3% commission. As I said, I wrote the formula so that the multiplication would take place just once instead of doing it three times in the formula, and so here's how the formula would look if I did the multiplication inside the formula. In this example, I have three different deduction rates for salaries. For salaries of less than 25000 the deduction is 
for salaries twenty five thousand to thirty nine nine ninety nine the deduction is eight percent for salaries greater than or equal to forty thousand the deduction is ten percent so I'll start my formula out with my equal sign and once again I'm going to save a little time by doing my multiplication um, of the result of the if function instead of doing multiplication inside the formula so I'll go b7 times if and my first logical test is b7 less than 25,000 comma if true the salary deduction is 6% or cell B2 and I need B2 to be an absolute cell reference so that it doesn't change as the formula is copied down this column so I'll press the F4 key on my keyboard and those dollar signs mean that B2 is an absolute reference comma and I'll start my second if statement and the logical test is if B7 is less than 40,000 comma the value if true is cell B3 and again I need that to be an absolute reference so I'll press the F4 key comma otherwise 10 percent or cell B4 and again I'll make that into an absolute reference with my F4 key on my keyboard type my ending parentheses which is in green so that tells me there's at least one more ending parentheses press enter and double click and there are my deductions note that you can nest a lot of functions inside other functions up to 64 in fact but don't make your formulas too complicated if you need more than a few if statements you might want to use the VLOOKUP function instead there's information in the quick reference card at the end of the course about that function I hope you can take the time to do the following practice and this is the end of the course